Hi guys, welcome back. I'm in here in the shop this morning and I just wanted to do that video real quick to show you how to tie this tassel knot. Like I said, I'm not a braider, but I did figure out how to tie this knot pretty efficiently. I'm gonna kind of show you that in this video. We're gonna do two versions. We're gonna do a three strand tassel knot and a four strand. I think the four strand looks a lot better. It is a little more difficult, but I think in the end, the knot looks a little bit more professional. I'm not a braider, I don't claim to be one, but I'm gonna show you in this video how I do that. The book that I'll be referencing and I'll show you where I, uh, the actual knot in this book that I'm using. We are using a modified version, so it's a little bit different, but not, not much from the start. It's just kind of right there at the end. But the book is the uh, Encyclopedia of Rawhide and Leather Braiding by Bruce Grant. This is a great book. I suggest if you want to do any kind of braiding or if you just want to have it around as a reference that you find this book. Uh, I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. Uh, I think Tandy or maybe Weaver Leather maybe sell this book or used to. Anyway, if you get online, you'll be able to find it. It's a very popular book. Most braiders have this on their shelf. Um, it's just a really good reference guide. So we'll be ref referring to uh, an actual knot inside this book. I'll show you which one that is. But I'm gonna show you that and we're gonna get started. All you're gonna need is a pair of wing dividers and a sharp knife and then some lightweight leather. The leather that I'm using, this is probably like a four ounce. It's not much over a four ounce at all. It might even be closer to a three ounce, but you're gonna want something fairly thin. So you can use Latigo, harness leather, anything like that. But once you cut your strip, you're gonna to wanna to pull it down on a bench skiver or something to get it leveled off to a fairly thin thickness. Um, you can vary that just a little bit depending on how you want the end knot to look. So I'm gonna show you what I'm, this right here is just a chap leather, but I'm gonna show you in this video how I tie that. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, like I said, here's the knot. Here's a close-up look at that. It's got a really nice braided pattern around the outside of that knot there, and then these tassels come out the bottom. What we're gonna do, this one here I had tied into something else, and so the, the front is gonna look different than on the one we're gonna do. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out with a one-inch strip of leather. You can start out with any width you want. You just need to know if you're gonna do a four strand, you're gonna have to break that down into four different strips. So one inch tends to work really well, doing just quarter inch strips on there. And so what I'm gonna do first, we wanna square up both ends so they're nice and square. And then we wanna come in here about two to two and a half inches. You can go however long you need to. This is gonna be the area that will sew down to another strap, like the purse strap that we did, or a head stall or a pair of reins. You're gonna sew this in down here. If you're doing a pair of like five eighths reins or three quarter inch reins, you're gonna have to use that same width of strap and then strip that up into three strands or four strands, whatever you're doing. So you're gonna wanna just kinda keep that in mind. Since we use this on a purse strap, I did one inch, that's what I'm gonna show you here. But again, whatever width strap you're gonna be sewing it on, um, you can change the width of the, the actual knot that you're gonna be putting on there. So we're gonna come down two, two and a half inches from the end there. And then I like to just take a tape measure and just put a mark here since this is one inch. To break that into four strands, we do a mark at every quarter inch uh, area there. So one and a quarter inch, half inch, and three quarter. And that'll give us four strands. And then what I like to do, you can definitely use a strip ease or a lace cutter if you have a bench top lace cutter, or you can use an Australian strander, whatever works best for you. I find that using a pair of uh, wing dividers works good for me. Um, since I don't tie a ton of these, it's just easier for me to make sure that everything's how I want it. And so I'll set this at, at our mark at a quarter inch. So now we'll take a nice sharp knife and we'll go ahead and cut on our line that we made with our wing dividers to ensure that we're straight. Just be sure you're cutting a nice straight line. And then we'll move that string over and we'll go ahead and use the wing dividers to make another mark. And then we'll cut that line again. You can certainly eyeball this if you're good good with a blade or whatever and you can kind of just watch it and cut them straight that's fine too so now we've got four strands and this is left together. Like I said, that'll be the part we sew on to whatever we're gonna use it for. We got four strands. Now this next step, you do not have to do if you don't want to. I think it makes a lot uh, nicer knot, a more finished looking knot, but I'm gonna go ahead and pair the edges, the outer edges of each of these strands. I have a bench top uh, lace cutter 
and uh, it allows me to, to uh, put a bevel on all these strands on the back side, on the flesh side. We're gonna go ahead and do that. You don't have to do that. It's gonna be pretty difficult to do with a, uh, like a safety skiver or something like that. If you're good with a knife, you can probably get away with doing it that way, but um, you don't necessarily have to do the beveled edge. I just think it makes it a lot nicer knot. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go over there and we're gonna do that right quick and then we'll be ready to start braiding this up. Okay, so now we've got our strand. As you can see right there, we've got the outer edges of each strand beveled a little bit. That'll just allow them to lay in that knot a lot nicer and smoother. There won't be any kind of lumps outside of the braid there. Everything will lay nice and smooth. And so what I'm gonna do now is just take this, before we soap all the strands up, we'll just take these strands and we're gonna point each one of them. So here you can kind of clean up or cut your strands a little shorter if you need to or whatever, but you're gonna want a long, long tapered cut on these so that you can feed them into your braiding as you're going along. So now we've got that ready to go. So now what we'll do is we're gonna take our saddle soap. You can use any kind of soap you like to use. Uh, most guys will use the white saddle soap or some type of braiding cream. And I'm just gonna take this and pull it through the soap. Do it on the other side. And all that's gonna do is just lubricate all those strands. That way as we're braiding, they'll slide on each other very easily and that'll help you to get a nice nice good braid on that so that's our we're ready to start braiding now all right so here's the front cover of the book and it's the encyclopedia rawhide leather braiding by bruce grant and the page that i'm on is 278 inside that that book and the one that I'm using is the round button of four thongs. So that's the one that's on, that it's showing um, that, that I follow. And you can kind of see the schematic here. It can get really confusing kind of following these along sometimes. This one's not real bad, but some of the stuff in these books can get a little confusing. You just have to kind of work through it and play with them. Um, but this is, again, it's the round button of four thongs. It's on page 278 and 279. That is the one that I'm using out of the Encyclopedia of Rawhide Braiding and uh, by Bruce Grant, and that's a great book for that. All right, what we're gonna do to start this braid, you're gonna have your four strands. You're gonna go ahead and just kind of pinch this together, and then you wanna lay these strands out like that so that they're, they kind of open up there. And then what you wanna do to start it is just fold this over, leave yourself a loop back here, you can kind of grab that and kind of do this however you want to um, as far as holding on these strands. But basically what we're gonna get is you're coming over the next strand, over that one, over this one, and then this strand, the last one, will come over and then back through your original loop. So you end up with a square sort of right there, okay? Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and tighten that down, just pull each one, gentle with it, make sure you get it nice and even. You wanna kind of push all these together. It's gonna to end up making a square on the top. Just kind of take your time, tighten all the strands up. Make sure they're nice and flat, they're not bunched up or wrinkled. So 
So as you can see there, I've got a square. And so now what we want to do is now you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to go under. So you're going to take the first strand, like I said, leave you a little loop right here. But you're going to go under the next strand. That strand will come around. Then this strand will come around. Then this one will come around there. And then this tail of the last strand will go through your original loop. So there you have kind of the same thing, but going under instead of over each other. They're going under each other. So now we'll tighten all those up. Now on that first box that we made, you wanna go ahead and make that fairly tight because you're not gonna be able to tighten that one up once you're done. These here, you want them snug, but don't tighten them super tight because we've gotta be able to get all the braiding done. I like to do them and then go back through and tighten, tighten everything up at the end once I've got the braid done. But as you can see there, we've got the very similar box type situation going on, but it's going on underneath that first box that we made. And so now you're gonna go around and do the exact same thing we did the first time, over, over, over the next one. These things get a little unruly at times, but you get over, and then we'll come back over, back over here and through our original loop. So now we've created the same thing we originally did. And so now we'll come here and tighten these down. And again, don't get them super tight. You just want to get them snug. And so now we've got kind of a box deal going on on the bottom of our original box and then one on the top. And that right there creates like a little square right there on the top. You should see a little bit of a square right here. So now we're ready to start actually finishing off the braid on this knot. And this is where you've got to kind of pay attention where your knots are because the knots, or where your braid, where your, all your strands are, because this is where the braiding part comes in. So you got, when you look at it from the side, you're gonna have one pointing down, then this one coming from there, pointing down. So you're gonna wanna take this one, kind of fold it out of the way, and you're gonna see this one here coming out from underneath, this, this strand here, and then a strand coming out here, down, and then this strand there. They're kind of side by side. So what we wanna do well, they're kind of this one's kind of right on top of that one and so what we're going to do is you're going to want to come up and split those two and this is technically you're doing that so it's going to have you know this one's not attached to anything but you got to imagine that as that fid goes through there you're going to want to go under this strand but be sure you come under this one as well so what i like to do is go ahead and open that up take that previous strand you're going to want to go flesh down towards the inside of the knot and kind of hold it and guide it through there so it doesn't flip on you. And then be sure that it's going underneath that next strand. There, just like that. So this is our one we went underneath. This is the one we just pulled through. So now we'll pull this one down, rotate the knot, flip that one out of the way because that we're done with that one for right now. So now the next down one, we're gonna do the same thing. We've got one free strand here. We're gonna come up in here. Don't go underneath this other strand here. You're gonna go on top of that, but then underneath this free strand. So we'll take, so that one's out of the way. Take this one. We're gonna come up and underneath those two. And so now this next one that's pointing down, we're gonna come down with it, flip those, those two out of the way. With these two, we're done with. So now we've got one more. We'll come up. Like that. And now this one pointing up, we're done with him as well. 
Now's where it gets tricky because now we don't have a free strand because we're back to where we started. So basically you just you can backtrack and kind of visualize what the strands look like, but it's gonna be this strand right here. And then this strand is this next free strand. So that means we need to go under, under, right there, both of those two, okay? Because this top strand right here is this one. And so that's what we've done all the way until we got there. So we wanna be sure and go underneath those two, not going underneath this next one, just these two right here. And we'll take that, pull him through there. Be sure he doesn't get twisted on you or out of position. So now they've all been put where they need to be. So now you can kind of look at it and make sure you've got the same amount of things happening in between each one of these strands pointing up. Everything should look right, it should look like that. And when it comes to braiding, I have to really pay attention to the pattern because I'm not a braider. I've got to kind of just hope that I'm doing everything right usually. So I just kind of go, if they all look the same, then I'm assuming I'm on the right track and that's how I kind of learned. But you can also refer to that book and look at what they're doing there. Like I said, some of it can be confusing. So just kind of pay attention to what's going on. Um, so now if you'll notice, we've got this square still here in the middle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take each strand and come right down in the corner of each box or each, each the corner of, of this box. In every corner, we're gonna go down with one of these strands. So you wanna go to the next available corner. So we've got a strand there and we've got a corner right there in between these two. So what you're gonna do is go down with your fid, but you don't wanna go through the original box we created at the very beginning. You wanna go down beside it and behind all of this stuff that we've just created. So we're gonna go down right there and you should pop out right under, right out the bottom like that. And so you just, it doesn't take a lot because we're pretty loose on this. And then you'll go flesh side facing out like that. Just make a, you're just coming, coming around it. And the flesh will be pointing to the outside when you come out. And so we'll do that. Then we'll come to the next one. Do the same thing. Fit down through there. You're not going through the center of the original square box thing we created. You're just going in between that and all this stuff we're braiding. We'll go to the next box. You're going in corners. So just look for the next corner. And that's what it should look like on top right there. And you should have all four strands kind of evenly spaced around the outside of your, of your knot here. And now we can begin to tighten this up. You can remember the very first box that we created is already tight. We don't have to worry about that, but all of this is fairly loose. So we want to tighten it up. So what I like to do is just pick a strand. Try not to pick one of, of these that are just right here at the end. You want to pick one that's somewhere in the middle so that you're not, um, we're trying to tighten the whole thing up. So we wanna kind of start from there. So usually start with one of these that are pointing down and just try to snug that up and then follow it around and pull it at the next spot where it comes out and then come back. And then when you get to the end, you can just pull that down. Then you can pull the next one right beside it, kind of tug on that and then pull on the, just kind of follow it around. You're wanting to follow that one strand around there, tightening these as you go. Don't get too overly aggressive or you'll throw your knot completely out of whack and it'll it'll just look kind of bad. It'll take you a lot more work to get it straight again. Just kind of get them, get them where they're snug. And you'll kind of start seeing that knot get a little more shaped up and looking a little a little more fancy and that's what we kind of want so you can kind of adjust your threads if you got one that's kind of folded you can kind of put your deal in there and straighten it out a little bit and you can kind of fiddle with this knot as long as you want to to get it to looking just like you want and um, I just think that doing it 
tying the knot loose is much better than tying it, trying to tie it tight and then trying to force all this stuff through there as you go. So I prefer to do it this way and tighten it down at the end. It takes a little more time, but I think it makes a better knot. And like I said, you can kind of adjust and fiddle with this as much as you want to. You want to try to keep it centered over your square here. I got a little bit far down where you can kind of see a little bit too much of that. That's just a tightness issue. You got to kind of be sure you tighten everything down the same amount all the way around and keep going until you get it right or else you'll kind of pull it. Kind of pulled that square out just a little bit there, but that's not a big issue. And then once you've got your knot kind of how you like it, and what you're going to want to do is I usually start right here where the fold over ends up and you want to come up right up through the center and you should come right out the middle of that original box that we created. You come right through there. It's going to be kind of snug in there so you want to kind of open it up a little bit and then take your end, push that through there and just pull it straight out. This is where it's kind of different than what it shows in the book. They do a little because it's a little bit different knot um, or what the way they're finishing it off. Now here, when you come to these that are on top of this piece of leather, you're gonna have to just feel around with the point of your fid, but you can get, you can find out where that center is. Just be sure you're coming out of the center of that original square. And that way all the tassels come out where they're supposed to be. And you might need a little pair of needle nose to get these out from there, but just pull them up tight. Again, I'm making sure I'm coming out of the middle. So there's our tassel knot. We've got four strands coming out. As you notice, when we when we went around this way, that we had flesh side showing on all the strands that were hanging down. Um, but then when you flip back and you come out of the center of the knot, they're all smooth side facing out. That's kind of personal preference. You'd prefer to see the flesh or the grain side versus the flesh side. So how you go down through the knot at the at the last, that's kind of important. That way when you come up through the center, it flips it back the other way and that way you see the grain side. But that's a four strand. That's the uh, tassel knot that we use here in the shop for different things. Like I said, you can use this on bit ends or head stalls, uh, different bag hangers, different things like that, closure knots. It's a pretty cool little knot. Just kind of Kind of cowboy and I think it looks pretty cool. Now I'll show you how to do one with a three strand and the three strand is gonna be a lot faster and a little easier. I just don't think it's quite as pretty a knot as, as this is here. So here I'm gonna show you the three strand real quick. It's exactly the same, it's just a little bit different because you only have three obviously. Um, I did not pair the edges of these uh, laces on here or the, uh, the outer edge there, I didn't bevel those. Just to kind of show you that you can do this knot without doing that. You don't have to do it every time and it still looks okay. Um, I've got one that I tied here a minute ago and you can kind of see it and it, it looks fine. I mean, if you're doing these for head stalls or range, you may not want to spend a lot of time, you know, pairing the edges and doing four strands and all that. This three strand one unpaired is, is absolutely fine. Looks nice, looks kind of cowboy, so it's fine for head stalls and range to try to keep your time down on that project. So what we're gonna do is start it out just like we did the other one. We lay all these out. We're gonna fold this over, leave yourself a loop back here, because you have to come through that. Bring the next one over, bring the next one over, and then right through the loop. And on a three strand, you're gonna end up more with a triangle than a square up here on top. But same thing, we're gonna kinda of get this tight. Just kinda of take your time, don't let your strands wad up. And I like to get this one fairly snug so it doesn't water around inside the knot so it stays the way I want it so everything looks even. So that's what you should have. So here we go, we got this right here. Now we're just gonna do the same thing we did on the four strand. So we're gonna come around here 
and then this one will come, the next strand will come down and around, and this next strand will come down and around, and then you want to come up through that initial loop that we made there. So it should look something like that. And then you just pull this tight. And again, we're going to leave them, you know, want them snug, but we're going to leave them kind of loose. So now they should all be kind of coming up and out. And so now we'll do the same thing as we did initially. Go over, bring this one over, and this one over. Go through our initial loop. So you'll make something that looks similar to that. And then we'll pull all of these tight as well. We're going to not pull them super tight, but we're going to get them kind of snugged up. And we're doing the exact same thing as we were doing on the four strand, but we've just got less strands here to deal with. And like I said, this one goes just a little bit quicker. So now we'll come here on the side. And again, you've got one. Now that we've only got three strands, you've got one here, this one coming over, this one here is pointing down. So we're going to take our first strand, we're going to come up right here. Just right up there, like that. Bring our strand, keep the flesh facing towards the middle. And we'll lay that down, pull this one around, spin our knot, just let that one that's pointed up, we'll let it kind of lay, lag back there. So now we've got the same thing again. So now we're back to where we started. So you gotta kinda figure out which one of these was the one we used, and it's this one here. We've got these. So then we're gonna bring that last one. Up underneath those two. So now you should have something that looks, we got double downs right there, double there. And double there. So now that you got all three strands are pointing up and out of the sides of the knot. So now instead of having a square here, you're gonna have a little triangle because we're only using three strands. So you're gonna end up with a little triangle right here in the middle. We're gonna do the same thing as we did in the square one. We're gonna go down on the corner in the corner of each part of that triangle with each strand. You don't want to go down through our initial um, knot that we made. You will go down around it and out the bottom of everything that's going around on the side of that. So we'll open that up. We'll bring our strand down through that. Just pull that tight. And again, here you're going to have the flesh side of the, of the strand facing out. That's fine. We'll come here and go to the next corner. And then we'll come down to the last corner right here. So now at this point you can see the braiding or the pattern that's going on here. So now we'll just tighten everything up before we go up through the center. Just pick a place to start and start pulling that strand, get a little slack pulled out of it. When you're doing this, be sure you're pulling the right strand, whichever one you're working on. Just trace that around there.
So now we've got our knot, knot tightened up here. I think feels pretty pretty right. And so now we'll just kind of feel around. This knot's gonna be a little trickier to get to the middle of, but you wanna be sure you're coming out of the middle of the interior knot with these strands for the tassel. One thing, if you do pair the edges on these, they do braid up a lot nicer because that pairing allows those strands to slide past each other and to get into place a lot easier, but it's not necessary. Just makes a nice finished look at the end and it also helps you when you're braiding. And so there's our three strand. Like I said, that's doing one with just three strings on there. This one works great if you're doing a three quarter inch head stall or something, you can cut that three quarters of an inch, break it up by quarter inch strips. If you're gonna do four strands on a three quarter, you have to break that up to the according uh, fraction of that so that you end up with four strands of the same width. But that works out really well, makes a good um, closure for bid ends, different things like that, different strap closures, and it looks pretty cool on whatever project you're doing it on. So give that a shot and see how it goes for you. Give it a try. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank y'all.